The first step when learning any software is knowing its working environment. In this section, we'll cover all of the working parts of Final Cut Pro 10's workspace and what each section is used for. These fundamentals will be the foundation for all work done throughout this course. Understanding this terminology is key, as we will be referring to them at all points of these lessons. Now, let's dig in. Here is the Final Cut Pro 10 or X editing environment. This is the interface you're gonna get everything done within Final Cut Pro. If you had just launched Final Cut for the very first time, this is how it appeared. So if you're following along, this is probably the window you have. There's no information, no assets. There's nothing to work with here. So it really isn't very useful unless you populate it with assets and information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a library that I already created for the purpose of demonstrating the editing environment. You can create a new library by going to File, new and library and you'll be able to just label what you want that library to be called and where you want to save it you can go to open library and you can open up a more recent library that you've created or you can open up one that is older and find it in the finder or the last which allows you to do all in one window which is this button right here which is open library if i click on that it opens up this window here you can create a new library you can locate a library or you can choose one of your most recent libraries so we're going to choose fcpx environment this is the library that i created for the purpose of showing you the editing environment within final cut pro 10 and i'm going to open it and it's going to populate with information when you create a new library, it comes up with two events or folders within your library, which is smart collections folders, which are folders that auto populate with the information that you import into your library. And what it does is it separates it within these five folders. You can create more folders that are more specific or that have specific tags if you'd like, but the Smart collections are auto-populated by all video, audio only, favorites, projects, and stills. And if I click on stills, it's just the stills. If I click on all video, it's just the video. So it's really easy to go and search there. You don't have to organize them. They auto-populate within those folders with exactly what they say they are. Very easy to stay organized when you're going and looking at those smart collections. And as you add metadata and information, it's only going to get more organized and easier to find things. When you create a library, it also creates an event. That event has the date that you created the library on. Originally, this NYC A7S event had the date that we created it on. Now we already changed the name of it because it's easier to find this event this way rather than by the date because you might create multiple events on one day or you don't recall the day that you created it. So you're gonna have to go and look in a bunch of events. For the purposes of staying organized and easier finding information, we relabeled it NYC A7S II because that's what it is. Footage from an A7S II in New York City. All right, so moving on, we're going to show the clip window. Now, right now I have it in list view and you can see up here I have the full video that I am highlighted on from start to finish. And it also has the audio waveform below it. And so if I had just hover over it, it'll actually scrub through that video as fast or slow as I move my cursor. I'm not clicking on anything. It's just making my cursor the playhead and showing me within that. So I can go in there and find whatever part of the clip I want when I'm editing. We'll cover the different editing tools, how to do different types of edits in another segment. So don't worry about that. I'm just showing you how it functions. So we have this view and then I can come over here and if I click on this other view, which shows clips in film strip view, I come here and now it has a bunch of thumbnails and you can go, well, those don't look like film strips and you're right. That's why you change here, this little slider here. And what it does, it adjusts the duration represented by each thumbnail in Eclipse film strip. So if I change that over to five seconds, you now see that it actually shows five seconds here, five seconds here, five seconds here, and each one of these little thumbnails. And it is an easier, faster way to view the actual duration of each clip. You can see the clip I'm highlighted on right now appears because of this view to be longer than the clip just below it. And it's because it is. So a easy, fast, identifiable way to see how long a clip is. Maybe you're just trying to find that longer clip or what have you. There's lots of uses for it. 
if I am scrubbing over this right now, you don't hear the audio that I'm scrubbing over. And that's because audio scrubbing is turned off. There are two, well, three ways actually to, to turn them on and off. There's one that's a little bit more uh, time consuming. So I can go up to view and turn on audio skimming here. I can turn it on and off just by, and it'll have a check next to it when it's on and not when it's off. Or I can go over to one of the, I think the two actual viable ways, which is you go over here and there's this little icon that's got uh, a little waveform and it's to turn audio skimming on. So if I click it, it turns blue, it's on so I can scrub. And you can hear the audio. Now I find it a little annoying, especially when I'm trying to talk to you to have that on. So I'm going to turn it off. Now there's also a keyboard shortcut that's going to do the same thing. So shift S We'll turn it on and off. So uh, right now, if you look at the little icon that I would have been clicking on right up here, I press Shift S, it turns blue, Shift S, and it turns off. So really easy to turn on and off audio scrubbing. So if you need it for whatever type of editing you're doing, you can turn it on and you can turn it off when it is a nuisance, which in this case is right now. So we're gonna leave it off. Right next to the clip window, you have the viewer. Now the viewer is going to show you what either you have uh, within your clip window or what is in your timeline. Now, a lot of nonlinear editors have two different windows there. So to see those, you can actually have both of them at the same time. You can go up to window and go down to show event viewer. If I click on that, now it's going to show me two windows of the same thing. So if I go here, now I have the clip that I'm highlighted on, and then I have a viewer that's just for the timeline. So if I grab this clip and I bring it down to the timeline, now they're showing the same thing. So if I go over here and I skim on this clip of the uh, Water Lilies by Monet. Um, you also can see the video which is on the New York street here of some taxi cabs that's actually in my timeline. So it's more typical for your nonlinear editor. So if you're used to those two views, real simple to do, window, show, event, viewer. You can also get to it with the keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna click and turn that off just so we have a little more space here. And Within the viewer, you also can show your scope. So if you go up to a view here on the corner of the viewer and you click on it, you can show video scopes. And depending on how many or what scopes you want to see, you can show, you know, just the Luma scope. You, it really, there's lots of different options here, the way they lay out, which ones you want to see. We're going to choose one and I'm just going to turn off. So hide video scopes or command seven. And use your scopes, it's gonna be really helpful. That's what the pros do, that's what you wanna do. Get used to using the scopes. So right next to the scopes is the inspector. So if I click here on my video that I have within my timeline, I'm going to just make it so I have some video there. So we can go up here and you'll see within this video tab, it has effects, transform, crop, distort, stabilization, rolling shutter. It has all these different options of things you can change. And the first thing I wanna do is this is really, say I wanna do a little color correction on this clip. So to get there, I'm gonna to go to the effects browser tab here and I'm gonna choose this one here and I'm gonna to go to color, color correction and I'm gonna drag it onto my clip. And now you can see it populates in the effects and I can go into color board and I can you know do all sorts of wacky things if I want with the color. I'm going to undo those. I can go and change the saturation level and really get that going here and exposure I can you know add some contrast and really change the way all of this looks um, and instead of being real flat the way it was so if I go over back into the inspector here and I turn on and off the color correction you'll be able to see that that's applying and turning off the color correction really really simple and it layers them in the order to which you applied them. So if you need to move them around, you can do so uh, just by dragging them around. So if I do some multiple color correction, maybe a for, uh, one set that does one thing and then I colorize or do something else and I wanna change the order of which, you just grab, click, and move around. The inspector is just where you're going to see where you can change the attributes of a selected item. So within these, you can go and toggle down and see uh, the different information. So there's also one for audio info, and you're going to find that you're going to be able to find inspectors for the audio, audio enhancements, info, transitions, tile, 
text generator, library properties, and share inspectors. So there's, there's just lots going on there. I'm not going to get into these. We'll cover those in another segment. That's just an overview of the inspector in general. And the effects browser is just this down here. So I got here, I'm going to turn this off. So this is just all the different things. So if I want to do music and sound, transitions, titles, generators, themes, these are all down here. And this is called the effects browser. So this is where you'd find it. These, there's a lot of presets in here. Uh, there, this is where all the different effects are. So if you want to turn them off, you just click on this X or you just click on the actual button that you clicked on. So as well, you can turn on and off the, the, inspector if you'd like by just going hide inspector or command four so it goes away so if you need more space you can do that and lastly you have your timeline down here and we're going to have a whole section on just the timeline because the timeline is very special and different in final cut pro 10 so we'll cover that another time but it's just down here you have your storyline and you will be able to trim and we'll talk about all the different editing and trimming abilities in another segment. Last but not least are your audio meters. Now within your project you can, and let's just play this, I'm going to press space bar and play and you can see that right here, right in the middle of your screen next to your time code, you actually have some small meters. Let me play it again so you can see those. Now you can hear it, so you know you have sound, and now you have meters to look at, but those are pretty small. So if you'd like them larger, all you gotta do is just click on them, and it'll show up here on the right side of your screen. So if we now play again. you'll actually be able to read those meters and see where you're at, whereas there's not any decibel level rating on the small audio meters, they're just on the far right. So that's the editing environment for Final Cut Pro 10 or X, all the different little facets that you'll need to know moving forward in this course. They will be very important to your greater understanding of Final Cut Pro 10 and Take these information and come back and, and watch this video again so you know all the little details because you're going to want to be able to get to them fast and you're going to want to stay organized. And coming up in our next segment, we're going to talk about how to import assets using the media import window from creating optimized media to proxies and how to add keywords.